Hello there. So it's week six and we're talking critical mixed race studies and this topic was set uh, by me in conversation with Benny. And so I have a lot that I could talk about this week, obviously, and a limited amount of time. So um, what I want to do is first discuss what critical mixed race studies and what multiraciality is and what it isn't. Um, first of all, what it isn't. There are a lot of assumptions made about mixed race people. And when people, especially monoracial people, hear the term multiracial, they often think of those bodies as um, divisive to racial politics or uh, suspect or irrelevant or at the very least secondary in importance to um, to monoracial people and research on on monoracial people and monoracial lives. Multiracial people are also constructed as not being able to pick sides or uh, we're just confused or politically ambiguous, etc. Um, also, there's this idea that all people should just or all people do always identify simply uh, with their phenotype or outward appearance. So what critical mixed race studies is and what multiracial raciality is, is that I believe that multiracial uh, identity or the kind of um, or multiraciality uh, theoretically is a potential site of challenging, uh, dislocating and interrupting white supremacy and that there should and must be a space um, for multiracial people. Uh, to articulate our own uh, complex lived experiences, as well as for critical mixed race studies and um, research on, on mixed race people. Also, uh, critical mixed race studies helps us think outside of the monoracial box, right? These either or boxes um, support oppressive systems of dualisms, right? So, um, Multiraciality can can possibly disrupt notions of the socially constructed essentialist and biologizing ideologies of race um, that we have in the U.S. And a critical mixed race identity, I believe, can disturb this the the white black dichotomy that, like I was talking about last week, that places whiteness on center that values whiteness over blackness and devalues blackness and other ethnicities. So this is the potential, I think, of critical mixed race studies and of, of multiraciality and multiracial as an identity. And Root's Bill of Rights in particular, I think, really opens up a space, insists that there must be a space for multiracial uh, people and lives and for multiracial studies and experiences. And I think that is a great starting point for research. Um, however, in saying that, I want to be cognizant of the ways that uh, what I just said, or, or the Bill of Rights, for instance, can be interpreted in the most individualized way, especially in our hyper-individualized U.S. culture. Um, so individual experience is extremely important, especially to beginning to theorize what is critical mixed race studies. However, um, individual experience is especially useful when in communal dialogue with others. Um, dialogue helps us remain accountable and it connects our, our personal experiences to larger critical analyses of race and the social world. And it keeps us thinking about the change that we're looking to make in the world. Um, and I think that must be at the forefront of our work and our thinking at all times, um, as that's the most, most ethical way of, of doing our work and our research. So there are two ways in particular that this week's topic and Roots Bill of Rights um, manifest in my thinking, theorizing, and research. Uh, one is the academic side, right? These studies, the critical mixed race studies part, and the theory that comes from that. I believe that critical mixed race studies must be cognizant of the political and of the power dynamics that feminist thinking and critical race theory exposes for us, for instance. Um, 
I mean, even the very term multiracial could possibly solidify dominant notions of race if we are careless with it. And the other aspect of my thinking here is about the lived experience of multiracial people and the theory that comes out of that. However, having said that, there's not just one way of being multiracial. And that's one of the really interesting, but also difficult and kind of uh, messy um, uh, things about multiraciality, right? There are all these different cultural contexts. So Benny talked about his cultural context earlier uh, this week, and mine is a very different one, right? So I work from a framework of mestizaje, which is an idea of of, of of racial mixing um, that in that is in Latino Latino culture, and I'm specifically using the frameworks that have been theorized by Latina and Chicana feminists such as Gloria Anseldua and her work on uh, mestizaje and um, the borderlands is really really I think a very useful framework in my thinking about multiraciality. However, not everyone comes uh, from that cultural context. And so there are many people that will identify as multiracial, multiethnic, um, biracial, etc., who do not operate from that place. And so their experiences of, of, of their multiracial uh, lives and identities would look and sound very different from mine and similar in some ways as well, clearly. So what I'm interested in as well is thinking about this idea of queering race. So here's what I want to leave us with um, lastly, and that is um, the idea of thinking about race queerly and not just as a style, not just as a way to write about race, um, but really thinking anti-heteronormatively about race and ethnicity and racialization in the U.S. And I'm interested in, in, in talking more about how thinking anti-heteronormatively about race can help us practice anti-racism in some of the ways that I've mentioned above, especially in terms of dualisms, but in other ways as well. Um, and hopefully maybe you'll have some feedback or comments on what I've said so far, because I would love to hear about that. And I want to wrap it up at this point. Um, but lastly, I just want to say if you're in the Midwest area, and you're interested in more conversation about um, multiraciality and mixed race studies, um, maybe you would be able to come to the Critical Mixed Race Studies Conference that's going to be at DePaul University in Chicago this November 1st through 4th, 2012. I will be there. But if you can't be there, of course, again, I would just love to hear any feedback that you have so far, any thoughts that are coming to your head. And um, thanks for listening. And again, I really look forward to hearing any responses that you might have.